What's up YouTube, what's going on guys? So today we're talking about wrist wraps, force transfer in the bar and how important wrist wraps actually are even if you think you don't need them for the bench press. They're not just there to prevent wrist injuries or pain, uh, they're actually there to move the barbell better and everyone should be using them. And I'm also gonna be talking about my grip placement on the bar. We talked about um, the slight extension in the wrist in that other bench video, but today we're gonna go into further how I like grip the bar and some of the other nuances with my shoulder. But first thing first, wrapping wrist wraps. Why this is vitally important, when we are um, going through the range of motion on the bench press and we exert force into the bar, we're always gonna be limited by the various joints we're utilizing in the movement pattern. So if our wrist uh, gets wobbly or our elbow gets wobbly or something is not um, able to exert maximum force or transfer maximum force to that bar, we're not gonna have the highest output. So what you wanna do is be able to lock your wrist uh, in place while we are going through the range of motion. And again, what you'll see usually in beginners, people who think they don't need to use this wrist wrap, they say, oh, I don't have pain, it's fine. But if you look really closely at their videos, if they're filming themselves, like I have all my clients do, I'll always point it out to them. You can see as they move through the range of motion, the wrist wobbles a little bit. That's lost force transfer to the bar. We want this thing locked in place, and the stronger you get, the more important this is, uh, especially because barbells are designed to actually have some spin and roll. So the way we do that is with wrist wraps, and how you wrap them is vitally important. The first thing you have to understand, there's rules in powerlifting federations. Most of the federations are about the same with how you can wrap these things. And there's, what you wanna do is be able to actually wrap the wrist itself. So these aren't supposed to go over the forearm. Like you don't wrap it around the actual forearm itself. You need to get above the crease of the wrist uh, joint. But the trick is not putting it so high where you get called by the federation. I don't know the exact rule off the top of my head. I think it's something like a centimeter below uh, or above the bottom of the wrist crease on the uh, lower portion. But the top portion can be wrapped higher. So what I do is I kind of get on here, I put my thumb in the loop, oh, and that's the other rule, you can't actually have your thumb in the loop once you wrap these things. So I start off with the thumb in the loop, and I grip this portion of the wrap, because if you just wrap it from the thumb loop, it's hard to take this thing off after. So I put the thumb loop on, I grip this, and then I pre-wrap this by just getting it kind of tight, it doesn't need to be perfect, and this gets some of the slack out, and then I take this thing, and I crank it back, and now when I wrap it, what I'm trying to do is keep it low on this bottom portion, but high on the top portion. So I wrap it in an angle around the actual joint itself. And I crank this thing as tight as I can get it. So I'll do it once like that, and then pull it back again, and crank it tight. And you can see as I'm wrapping it, it's going around the wrist joint. So that wrist joint is kind of in the middle of the wrap. And when I finish, you can see how numb my hand is and I can't fully open it. This is good because that thing is locked in place now. But on the bottom, I'm Federation legal, USAPL, USPA. You need to be able to have uh, a visual of that bottom portion of the wrist, or excuse me, the hand, the palm, and then I do the same thing over here. So that's the first part. Now we gotta actually get our grip on the bar in the most stationary position possible. And I'll show you how to do that. So the goal here, now once we have these wraps on, I gotta talk quick because my hands are going numb. You actually wanna have kind of a diagonal position across the palm as low as possible in the hand when we grip the bar. And one of the best ways to do that is to rotate your hand internally towards the midline of the body. And this lets you really wedge the bar in the lowest position of the hand. But then from there, we don't want to bench like this. You'll see people who use the quote unquote Japanese grip. I don't really know where that came from. Um, but that causes a lot of internal rotation of shoulder joints. We lose shoulder stability and position, and I don't like that. So what I do after I place it low in the hand, you can see my shoulder crank into place. So I'm gonna get lined up on the bar and show you. So first thing first, I catch my arch. I always come behind the bar. I roll my shoulders into position. So when I get on the bar, first I get lower than I want to be. Roll the shoulders into position so I have the most downward angle of my shoulders going into the pad. I then roll the bar forward after I've planted my feet. And then from here, I get up on the bar and I internally rotate my hands like this. And that gets it as low in my palm as possible. And then I wedge it into place. So you see how low that is on my palm? My palms are, or excuse me, my wrist is slightly extended. It's wedged in there low, but I don't want to bench like this because then I'm internally rotated. So what I do after that is I get my grip 
and then I set my shoulders without losing that palm position. And if you do this right when you unrack it, you should feel an extreme amount of stability in that wrist joint. And then when you actually bench, that bar is going to be so low in the palm and your wrist is going to be so locked into place. When you transfer force to that bar, it's all going to go into the bar nice and perfect and you're going to have high efficiency of force transfer. If you don't do this, we see wobbly wrists or if the bar is too high, the wrist is going to want to move around and extend too much or flex too much and that's when we come up with uh, issues in force transfer. So this is how you should be setting up on the bar, getting your grip and setting it. Now some of you might find when you do that uh, palm position, it's hard for you to set your shoulders. If that's the case, I'd recommend doing the same thing but without internally rotating the hands until you get enough shoulder external rotation to really set the shoulders into place. Most of you, if you end up benching really flared and out, although some people do that, you're going to get shoulder issues. We want stability in this shoulder joint. We want to set it back and down. And we don't want the elbows tucked, but we don't want them out. We want them somewhere in between. If we see internally rotated though, that's not going to be good. The reason I roll back the shoulders is because when I'm able to get more downward angle of the shoulders, I can rotate them better. If I'm more flat back, it's harder. So I try to set the shoulders into position by wedging them into the bench. And from there, internally rotate, get a deep grip deep in the palm, and then set the shoulders 